Good evening, everyone. We will call the City Council meeting to order for June 1, 2015. Time is 6.30 p.m. First order of business is roll call and determination of quorum. Charlene. Scott. Drew. Here. Lewis. Here. Doyle. Here. Wright. Here. Estes. Here. Nordstrom. Here. Roberts. Here. Weifenbach. Here. Lorente. Here. We have quorum. Thank you. We will now recognize Pastor Greg Kroger from First United Methodist Church for our invocation. You're welcome to participate, but not required. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for our city's leaders. I pray for all those in authority in Rapid City, especially I hold before you our mayor and all the members of our city council as this evening's meeting gets underway. May they be blessed with supernatural wisdom, divine guidance, and unwavering devotion to the common good, such that all our community's inhabitants may live quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in your sight. With each item coming before this honorable body, may your peace govern the proceedings. May there be fullness and clarity of information, thoughtful and considerate discussion, and wise and just decisions. May all of us know that we are free and empowered to trust in you, O Lord, with our whole hearts, and not simply lean on our own understanding. As we are one nation and one city under God, we look to you to make our paths straight. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Greg. We are now into the adoption of the agenda. We do have one item to be added so far, and this is an emergency resolution. This is item 42A. This is resolution 2015-57. And when we get to that item, it will be um, put up on the screen and discussed further. It is a resolution to declare an emergency and authorize repair or replacement of certain fixtures and equipment for the water slide tower at Roosevelt Swim Center. Do we have any other items to add to tonight's agenda? We'll go to Darla Drew, Councilman Darla Drew. Um, yes, I'd like to add a couple of events that are coming up that are organized by the city I'd like to talk about at some point. Okay, well, uh, 61A. Sure, I've got two of them, so. One of them was uh, a gear up announcement. What was the other one? Uh, rocking with disabilities. And rocking with disabilities. Put those on the same item, 61A, okay. if that's all right with you. Sounds good. Anything else to add to tonight's agenda? We have a motion? By. Okay. Motion by us, a second by Lewis. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We do not have any general public comment items tonight. Did I miss anyone? Okay. We are now on items. 1 through 38, public comment is now open on items 1 through 38. Do not have any speaker request forms on those items. Again, have I missed anyone? Okay. Public comment is now closed on items 1 through 38. Would any council members like to remove these items for separate consideration? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve 1 through 38? So motion by Estes, second by Scott. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're now on items 39 through 61. We have two speaker request forms so far, one on item 40 and one on item 43. We'll first go to the speaker request form on item 40 from Chad Westendorf. Come on up, Chad, and while you're coming up, I'll read, read what this is. This is first reading of ordinance 6051, an ordinance amending the municipal code for a rezoning from general commercial to low density residential two located in the general vicinity of the southeast of the intersection of Marlin Drive in Minnesota. Sir, you have the floor. Good evening. Um, I live uh, just across the road from that area, and there's a pretty large drainage area within that zoned-off property that's called out, and I'm just curious what will happen to that uh, drainage area, if that will be left intact or if it'll be, okay. everything will be regraded. And we'll have an opportunity to address that for you when we get to that. 
item. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll recognize Linda Marchand on item 43. I'm Linda Marchand and I live at 4146 Wisconsin Avenue. And I just wanted to say that I'm not against having this event, but I'm totally against the location. That's the only complete north-south route through Rapid City. It will hinder our police department and safety and our fire department and the residents of Rapid City safety during the busiest time during the year, our summer months. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much. We do not have any additional speaker request forms on items 39 through 61, which included 42A. Have I missed anyone? Public comment is now closed. We are now on item number 39, and we'll go to Councilman Chad Lewis. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Item number 39 is the second reading of Ordinance 6009, an ordinance to adopt the 2012 International Residential Code by amending Chapter 15.13 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. I move approval. Motion by Lewis, second by Roberts. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 40. Item number 40 is first reading of Ordinance 6051, an ordinance amending section 17.06 of Chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, rezoning within described property as requested by Dream Design International for a rezoning from a general commercial district to low density di residential district two for property generally described as being located southeast of the intersection of Marlin Drive and Minnesota Street. I move approval. We have a motion by Lewis for approval and a second by Nordstrom, and we'll go first to Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to see if we can have someone answer his question on the drainage. And I'm trying to imagine on Minnesota where this is, that's got to be the front part of right, right off Catron. We'll go to our Public Works Director, Terry Waltersdorf. Terry? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the map here. It is, it is uh, about a block off of Catron to the east there up beyond the south side of Minnesota. And uh, as far as the drainages, I'm not familiar with the details of this particular project, but typically those drainages, uh, we would have drainage easements over top of them that we would end up maintaining with our drainage utility group. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You, I'd just like to know what's going in here, if they. Yeah. yeah I don't know, know the details of what, what's going in there. I'll go to our planning director, Brett Limbaugh. Uh, the vast majority of this property is going to be uh, for single family detached homes. Uh, there is a drainage in the corner that will be maintained. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's the one that this gentleman is referring to. I'm looking at the aerial photograph and you actually kind of see a, uh, a, a drainage facility down there in the corner and that will be maintained. Uh, the remainder of the property will be subdivided. But of course, when they do these things, they have to do their drainage plans and show us where that drainage is going to be conveyed. So. Uh, I'm assuming our staff have done their job and that uh, we will not have a drainage issue. The other question I would have is uh, it's single family. I mean, is it buffered out? I mean, this is right now it's zone general commercial. Yeah, we had a great debate about this um, with the applicant and the property was all commercial. That what they've agreed to do, and you've got both cases before you tonight. First one is the uh, single family detached portion of this development. And then um, as you go towards um, the uh, intersection there, they've agreed to downzone that from commercial to office. And we think office is more compatible with that residential than commercial. Um, also, if you, if you go out there, the homes are gonna be sitting at a considerably higher elevation than where the office is gonna be along Marlin. So what they'll do is they'll end up uh, putting a extensive landscaping trees and so forth along that hillside. So they'll actually be looking out you know, across rather than uh, directly into uh, an office building. At least that's our hope with the future of that. Uh, yeah, I understand, it, but I know, and I know from going through this with Walmart that I'm going to have people calling me because they're going to build those houses there, and then they're going to build offices there, and they're going to say, "What did you build an office right next to our house for?" Um, typically, don't they buffer out with uh, single family, then they go multifamily or like townhouse duplexes, and then office commercial, then general commercial. Yeah, and that was part of the discussion we had with the applicant, too, is the appropriateness of doing single-family detached in that location. Uh, they'd already gone to a significant amount of uh, time, trouble, and effort to plat this out, which I wish they hadn't done before they contacted us. Uh, but we figured that the, the best compromise in this situation was to do the office instead of the commercial uh, further down the road. But you are right. If you look across the street, there are uh, 
uh, high density residential apartment buildings. And it, that's, that's really what we uh, thought would be appropriate too. I, I can see this train coming down the track. Is there, um, I'm not sure how we handle that because just like the Walmart thing, when the people built those, they came in here, the, the developers came in and asked for their resident, um, they had like duplexes and townhouses slated to go in there. And then they rezoned it to single family. Now they got single family right up against the parking lot at Walmart. And that just, I mean, and then we used the excuse, well, you should have known it was general commercial. Well, yeah, I wouldn't know if I was a single family. I wouldn't expect a Walmart up. I just caution that we, something be done here to so these people building these single family homes know that there's going to be offices next to them I mean we're seeing this on fifth street we're seeing we're going to see it here I mean if it's something we want to change as a city then we should change it otherwise we need to think about this one I would think thanks we'll go to Alderwoman Amanda Scott thank you Mary may I ask uh, Mr. Brett Limbaugh a couple questions please you may thank you Brett, as far as this process, the rezoning coming before the Planning Commission and then the City Council is the first step prior to platting it, isn't it? Or have they already platted it? Uh, you know, they've already got this in a preliminary plan form, so they've already done everything but the final plat on this. Um, again, it was an ideal timing for us to be looking at the preliminary plan and seeing all the single-family detached units there we would have preferred to see what Mr. Weifenbach had referred to as something a little bit denser, uh, perhaps uh, attached or multifamily, and we discussed that with them. Um, at the end of the, the at the end of the day, it's it's up to the applicant to make a decision on what they want to bring to planning commission and before you. And this is what they decided to do. Uh, the compromise uh, again being the next case on your docket here, which would be down zoning of the uh, adjacent commercial to uh, office. So if that's something that you want to see then uh, these are all lined up uh, for that to happen if there's something you would prefer to see then let us know what that is and we can go back and discuss that with them further so these are coming before city council because they've already gone through planning commission and been approved that's correct but has the final plat been approved and gone through planning commission no i don't believe so so if these are approved tonight by city council the final plat would still go before the planning commission and come before city council or does it uh, just have to pass Planning Commission. Yeah, the uh, the uh, preliminary subdivision went. Uh, let's see, five seven to the Planning Commission, so they still have to do a final plat. Uh, so we would have to cycle back, I guess, to the the Planning Commission and and do something different if you want to increase the density. Does it if if the final plat goes before the Planning Commission, though, does it come to City Council or only if appealed? Yeah, the final plats don't come back to Council, so. Um, uh, what we have before us right now is the single family detached setup. And uh, if you don't want a down zone at this time, this is kind of the last place to catch it. So if the city council were to deny this and not approve it, the developer would have to go back and rework their plans? Yeah, they'd have to go back and rework the preliminary subdivision plan because they do have this kind of lotted out with single family detached. Uh, my assumption is you'd probably want something significantly different, uh, which would, uh, It'd be an issue for them. They'd have to go back and redraw it. Has the developer at this time put in any infrastructure or uh, how much have they expended into cost as far as going moving down to developing this partial parcel? Well, there, there is the drainage, I think, that we've, we've, we've talked about already, but that's not on really a developable, developed portion of this. Um, the vast majority of this, this lot is vacant and there really isn't any infrastructure in place. There's infrastructure directly adjacent to it uh, and uh, the, they were responsible for doing the single family detached and also the multifamily on this uh, development so um, they're ready to kind of move ahead with this phase of their development thank you Brett and Brett if if requested by a city council member up here are you prepared to bring up the um, aerials and stuff that you're looking at would that be easily to put up on the screen so that yeah, we might. I mean, I think at this scale, since they're all on a single page, and I'm not sure if you have your project reports open or not, um, we could try to put them up. I'm not sure what the legibility would be for the audience on the, on the screens here, but certainly you have them on your laptops. The only reason I was bringing up is, and then my final question is, is a developer or a representative for the developer in the audience? Um, 
Is anyone from Dream Design here? I didn't recognize anyone out in the audience. Anyone from in the Dream audience? Design. So th that would be the reason I'd ask is if there was any other clarifying questions. Okay. So thank you. I'll yield the floor at this time. Floor has been yielded. We'll go to Alderman Jerry Wright. Jerry? Just for discussion, I, it's not the first time I've seen commercial property go residential. And if I remember right, a lot of times property has been zoned commercial, uh, probably in far exceedance of the actual probable demand for it. And when there's not a demand for it, the developer does have the option to go to zoning other than commercial for the ability to market it. And it's not necessarily bad planning or bad use. And I've seen some very good things happen when this happens. So I don't think this is a big negative, but um, I, I think it's okay from what I've seen. Heard, and I just know that we have a lot of commercial property zoned that's vacant and it's been vacant a long time. Thank you. Alderman Steve Laurenti. Thank you, Mayor. And if I could ask Mr. Limbaugh a question or two on this, depending on his answers. Thank you. Brett, can you, Mr. Lemma, can you tell me, it looks like the triangle shape looks kind of like a mountain, what I'm looking at, but uh, it looks like there's residential right across the, the road, is that correct? And it's commercial right now, so commercial, we have commercial right across the street from residential. Yeah, and, that, and that's correct. I mean, if uh, we were to allow this to develop it with its existing zoning, then it would be directly across the street. Um, you've got... Uh, multifamily and then uh, single family you can see that on your aerial uh, how, how that's laid out so you'd have another situation where you would have that direct adjacency uh, although you would have that roadway in, in between them do we know what, what the what it's zoned on the other sides of this uh, particular property now yeah, we've, we, we have um, medium density uh, which is where the multifamily is and then medium density and and uh, low density or LDR, which is to the other side of the street. Um, as you get towards uh, Elkvale, you've got commercial. And then as you go kind of south and to the to the west, you've actually got uh, county zoning, okay. which is really primarily agriculture. Okay, so it seems to me that maybe we might be actually improving the, uh, the mixture a little better than what we're looking at if we left it and denied it. I don't... Would, would you agree with that? I mean, do you think we're in a better situation than going from commercial straight to residential? If we went, if we approved this, would we be in a better situation where we've got office instead of commercial, then single family? You know, I would say given the topography of this site, it may be better off as residential just because there is a pretty significant slope that comes off from the residential portion down to where it would be office. In this case, I think that slope will create the adequate buffer. We weren't really comfortable when you look at it as a flat map and we were just like, oh man, what's going on here? But uh, when we sat down with uh, the developer, uh, their interests are, are providing a screen along, along that boundary. And uh, that in, in, in addition to uh, uh, what we're talking about, which is a fairly significant hill going up to the, where these homes are eventually gonna be, should probably be adequate buffering. Okay, thank you. I think it's a, a favorable move, in my opinion, from looking at the different zoning that's out there that uh, will be in a better position, I think, honestly, at least in my opinion. So, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Charity Doyle. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just some comments on things that have been said and I guess my take on it. Um, I totally get where Mr. Weifenbach is coming from. However, um, very familiar with the area, and I think that less commercial in the area is going to be more favorable to the neighborhood overall. Um, you know, I've seen this a lot of times, and I do think it's a, a move in the right direction, and this is one of the um, commercial to residential rezones I was very pleased to see happening. So, and, and I'm sure you understand all the reasons why. I mean, you know, runoff issues, traffic issues, there's, there's all kinds of issues that I think um, are going to be lessened as this, I mean, this is a really booming part of town, so I think we're minimizing the, the future problems by approving this tonight, so thank you. Alderman Brad Estes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm gonna support 40 and 41. As I, as I look at this, um, 
we're, we're putting we're going to put residential right across the street from uh, low and medium density residential and then uh, what portion of this is going to remain general commercial we're going to we're going to buffer the residential from the general commercial with with office commercial which I think is a is a logical step down and uh, and I believe if I see this um, on that triangle it's Alderman Lorente uh, referred to as a mountain I think over in the right hand corner I think there's a detention pond which I believe addresses uh, the constituents concerned about the drainage which I'm sure when they when they put their construction plans together I'm sure the drainage there will there'll probably be some kind of a detention pond there to remain so I'm going to support this it, lo it looks like a to me uh, an appropriate use of the property thanks Alderman Ron Weifenbach thank you Mr. Mayor and I appreciate all my colleagues weighing in because it gives me a better understanding I was missing something there and I got it so I think I agree it'll handle the drainage better because you won't have as much blacktop or rooftop so and they're already and I'm real familiar with this area too <laughs> so I'll live there if you anybody ever has a question thanks thank you we do have a motion on the floor for first reading on item 40 all in favor say aye Aye. opposed motion carries item 41 Alderman Lewis thank you Alderman or excuse me Mayor Quaker uh, I know 41 is first reading of ordinance 6054 an ordinance amending section 17.06 of the chapter 17 the Rapid City Municipal Code rezoning within the described property is requested by Dream Design International for rezoning from general commercial district to office commercial district. For the property generally described as being located southeast of intersection of Marlin Drive and East Minnesota Street. I move approval. Second. Motion by Lewis, second by Wright. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 42. I number 42 is first reading of Ordinance 6060, an ordinance to revise the regulations re regulate relating to private water and sewer service lines by amending chapter 13.12 of the Rapid City Municipal Code and move approval. Second. Motion by Lewis, second by Scott. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 42A. 42A was, what do we, what do we call that? You just one? read the title, the title of oh, it. I'm sorry, yeah, that's right. Emergency thing. Resolution to declare an emergency and authorize repair of or, or replacement of certain fixtures and an equipment for the water slide tower at Res Roosevelt Swim Center. I move approval. Second. We have a, a motion by Lewis for approval and a second by Estes, and we'll go to our Parks and Recreation Director, Jeff Beagler, for a brief explanation. Thank you very much. Uh, last week uh, at the Roosevelt Swim Center, we had an incident where a couple of chunks of concrete fell uh, from the platform at the top of the uh, uh, spiral slide, uh, water slide. Uh, and fell to the pool decking below. Now, fortunately, there was no one around for this uh, to, to injure anyone. Uh, the slide was immediately closed, and the area on the deck has been uh, cordoned off so that uh, no one can, can enter that area. Uh, we've had uh, the Public Works uh, project engineer, Rod Johnson, take a look at it, and uh, we feel that this is a, a uh, uh, severe enough of an issue that it warrants coming to you with an emergency uh, declaration so that we may be able to forego the competitive bidding process and get these repairs done as quickly as possible. Thank you. We'll now go to Council Lights, Alderman Jerry Wright. I stopped and looked at this this afternoon. I just want to say this probably draws a spotlight on what we've been trying to do with the Compass Committee, at least recently, on the need to look at our not only our fleet, but our buildings and our maintenance and management program and how we need to be prepared to fund such events. So, thank you. Alderman Charity Doyle. I'm just looking in the resolution. I didn't see um, anything with respect to a funding source. What are you looking for? Mr. We would be funding this out of our operating okay. uh, budget. Great, thank you. Anything further? The motion is for approval. Alderman, Alderman Amanda Scott. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Beegler, just for clarification, that means you're not anticipating adding a supplemental appropriation to the budget. This will be already covered in your finances. I certainly hope so, yes. Thank you. Any further discussion on item 42A? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're now on item number 43. Chad Lewis. Item number 43 is recommend denial of special event application for the slide of the city fundraiser to be held July 25th, 2015. I yield the floor. Floor has been yielded. We'll go to Alderwoman Darla Drew. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. For clarification to the people that are here tonight, 
we do support the Hope Center and um, wish them well in their fundraising. Um, this came to us fairly quick recently. You know, we don't think we've had, they've really given it enough time and consideration. It is closing a major artery. And, it, you know, at Legal and Finance, we had to say it, it looked like it'd be a great deal of fun. But for the city, we'd be putting a lot of our resources into this along with 80,000 gallons of water. And, um, you know, maybe we can just find a way to um, fund the Hope Center a little bit more with, without going through this, uh, jumping through these hoops. I don't think it's a great deal. You know, the, uh, the group that is bringing this in, Slide the City, would go away with the lion's share of the money and also be able to um, use the uh, nonprofit for PSAs and other advantages as far as advertising. So if it was a different location, I could probably say, yeah, let's look at it. But, but in this location, I, I just can't support this at all, and I'd have to say no. So thank you. We do not have a motion on the floor. So just a reminder, we'll go to Alderwoman Amanda Scott. Oh, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make that motion to approve the recommended denial of the special event application for the Slide the City fundraiser. Okay, so the, just so we're all on the same page, this is to uphold the Chief of Police's decision to deny. So a yes vote means the item will be denied. Correct. And you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple points. I did stream the Legal and Finance Committee meeting and saw the discussion on this. And um, even though the city does try to support all of our fundraising events, we did have our staff that reviewed it as thoroughly as they could with the time that they had. And when they bring back a recommendation of a denial, we're, as a city, well, I know at least I'm speaking for myself, I, as a city council member, am really looking for reasons to overrule staff. And so at the discussion at Legal and Finance and the following documentation and the emails that I've received, I just haven't seen anything that really r would recommend the city to support this as it is listed on this special event application. And as Alderwoman Darla Drew stated, you know, she, she might be more willing to look at it if it was in some other location, Personally, I would have a lot more questions such as I still want to know what services the city would be providing, how much cost that's going to be for this event, and I would have a lot more questions is the bottom line to this. So at this time, I could not, do, I could not support this. Thank you. Alderman Steve Laurenti. Thank you, Mayor, and if I could, I'd like to ask uh, Chief of Police a question on this. Chief, as we briefly spoke before the meeting, um, could you give a brief synopsis of where we're at with this. Does the denial cause issues with what we talked about briefly before the meeting? And can you expound a little bit on that, if you would, please? Thank you. OK. I did uh, have a follow-up conversation with Mr. Ward, who is representing Slide the City last Friday. And he committed to following up with the neighbors. And he indicated that they really did want to hold it at the location on 5th Street. The reason being is that in order for them to break even in terms of making a profit so they're able to provide a donation to the nonprofit locally, they would need 2,500 sliders um, to show up. And that's the importance of having it in such a central location. At that time, I had recommended that we consider alternative locations and I specifically recommended mall drive north of the mall just because it didn't have the public safety concerns and it does have the infrastructure in place. Um, since then, uh, late this afternoon, he sent me a follow-up email indicating that he had talked to the 5th Street neighbors and felt confident that there was not any opposition from anybody in that vicinity, but part of his email message included that he would be willing to host the event on Mall Drive if that were approved as an alternative. He was very clear that all he needs from the city regarding resources is assistance with the road closure, which would require signage and a detour plan, and then water access and permission to use the drainage. The area on Mall Drive north of the mall, the issue there is a lack of adequate parking for 2,500 people with, unless he came up with an agreement from one of the local private property owners, such as the Rushmore Mall and or the former SCI building, because they do have large parking lots and they're within walking distance of this location. 
Um, but that would be up to him to secure that parking commitment from those private property owners. The other two businesses that are in that vicinity are Barenz and Sons Painting, and then there's a storage area that both of those businesses would have a limited amount of traffic on a Saturday, and I think accommodations could be made to have um, a one-way in, one-way out that would uh, still allow the slide to occur at that location. So, Chief, one more question then. Um, are you okay? Do you think the best appropriate move at this point would be to deny it and then have them come back um, with some sort of new, more solidified plan for Mall Drive area? Or, because really at this point, conditioning and approval for Mall Drive seems kind of far fetched at this point, but maybe I'm wrong saying that. But. Well, I think the other issues that were alluded to are the water access and the drainage access, and, and if you're interested in. I would say if you're not interested in allowing this applicant access to the water and drainage and to the, the manpower that would come from the Public Works Department to facilitate that, it would probably be best to let them know up front now. The other hand of this is, is that the Hope Center does provide a very important service to our community and I sympathize with them that they're in need for a fundraising source because um, they're there's a great need for the services that they provide and they, they need more funds. So if they could pull this off and be successful, it could lead to an annual event for them and in the end that could be good for our city. So Chief, one last thing then. Might possibly a, an approval condition with your final approval be appropriate? I think, I think uh, approval of the road closure and the City Council authorizing the Public Works Division to come up with a detour plan and allow water access and drainage and the condition that the applica applicant notify the affected businesses and make arrangements to secure parking from private property owners in the vicinity. And so who will they come to for that, for that final check? All of these things you're listing. Those could come to me for final approval of okay. the event permit and with your preliminary approval, I would be comfortable administratively approving it at that point. Okay, thank you, Chief. And I can't make a motion, but I think maybe we should try to make this work. And ultimately, if it's, uh, you know, I do trust um, you to make that final decision uh, as to some of the stipulations you've talked about. So I, I would support a, a stipulated approval for the Mall Drive area, and I'm hoping maybe my colleagues would uh, try to find a way to support that as well. Thank you. Let's go to our city attorney, Joel Landine. Joel. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I would just make sure that we also, as part of any approval, make sure that uh, we confirm they have sufficient insurance. And I would think that we also uh, probably want a specific agreement that they agree to defend and indemnify us, and essentially their insurer would, if there's any access, since we're letting them use the public right away so we don't get sued as well. Chief, you still have your light on. Did you want to get back in queue? No. Alderman Jerry Wright. Well, I certainly do not support closing Fifth Street, and I would feel a whole lot more comfortable if Hope Center was petitioning versus an out-of-town promoter. And I'm wondering why wasn't Seventh Street considered? That used to be the soapbox derby thing in the years ago, and that's got a great hill and it's kind of isolated and actually has parking around it. Any ideas? I, I think it needs to be denied. If they want to rework it, maybe bring it back. I support the... Uh, no, I support the motion. For the chief on Seventh Street. If you want us to answer it, yes. Chief Jaggers. Seventh Street was considered, I don't have the fine details, but there were concerns with residential locations that would be blocked and also the drainage for the water was not up to standards. Yeah. Terry Walters door, Public Works Director. We have Storm Sewer on 7th Street. I, I'd have to check the utility maps. What, what section is 7th Street? Between Columbus and South Street. I, 
I, you know, I'm just, I'd have to check. I'm not going to support <clears throat> the, the Fifth Street thing, so thank you. So everyone's on the same page. The motion is to uphold the chief of police's recommendation or his denial, and his denial was appealed to the to the city council. Alderman Darla Drew. Well, it looks like we'll expend a lot of resources on this um, wherever it is. And as a person that's had a lot of experience with events, especially in the summertime, if it rains, we're just out all those, those things that we just put into it. Uh, and so I don't know what the um, contingency plan would be if it then make it another day or something. But I mean, uh, you know, we're going to put a lot of money, time, and effort into this. And um, there's always that possibility in the summertime that it won't even happen. So that's my concern. Thank you. Alderman Charity Doyle. Thank you, Mayor. And then in addition to um, the cost of water and uh, some of our resources, I also noticed that there was a request for private security in the form of our police department. And we are short staffed enough as it is. But when I think of um, everything that's going on with the water issues that we're having in this city, um, the flooding and, and adding to that, I just think it's probably a bigger a bigger issue than it appears on its surface. So I'm going to um, support the motion on the floor. Thank you. Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. How about if we add an alcohol license to this and we can improve it right away? No questions. Ron. You're welcome. The motion is for uh, outright denial of the permit. Now, does that, Chief, does that prevent them from coming back and asking for mall, mall driver? Will you take this vote as a, as a, a no anywhere period, um, vote? I think, I think if they came back with a very clear event permit that had all the logistics that left you with a high degree of confidence that it would be appropriate to hear it again, but the time between now and the prospected date is closing in quickly, so the likelihood of that happening is unlikely. I think if you deny it, it will be done for this year, but that doesn't make it out of the question for a future year. Very good. Alderman Richie Nordstrom. Richie? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess I'm a little surprised that we had no complaints from any other uh, businesses or the neighbors from over there because I did get a phone call about this and they weren't uh, eager to have this event take place on 5th Street. I'm also not supporting the idea of having this on 5th Street. If we can look at some other uh, location, I'd be supportive of that. But uh, the other issue that I'm looking at too, and I've had another email about this, is the uh, uh, is this a good resource or use of our resource for our water? Um, I've had some experiences watching Pactola Dam going up and down, and uh, right now we're in a good season, so um, I don't see a problem with having the sale of a water up there um, at this point. But uh, I just want to let uh, everybody know that I, I, I did receive some phone calls and emails on this, not supporting the Fifth Street. Alderman Chad Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I guess it just needs to be driven home to the public if it hasn't been already at this point. I don't think anybody's against the idea and everybody wants it, but we were given very limited information. They requested a lot of city resources without a lot of specifics, and therefore there was only the prudent thing to do was for the police chief to deny it until we could discuss a little more, and still we haven't gotten the, the basics. I mean, all the information we really need to make this happen. It's still kind of a rough plan, in my, my opinion. There hasn't been nearly enough information brought forth or preparation done by the applicant. So therefore, we have no choice but really to, to deny it, and I think that's the most important thing that is brought home here, that everybody is very much in support of the Hope Center. The police department supports them. I know the fire department supports them as well, but just without the proper uh, process we make everybody go through up here, and, and if you watch us, we really do that pretty good job of that. Um, I think that uh, it would be wrong of us to, to approve it at this point. So just understand, it's not, no one's against the, the idea of having fun. I was going to take my kids to it, but now I know a little more about it. Just can't vote for it. Thank you. Alderman C. Laurenti. Thank you, Mayor. Just one brief. I do support the denial on Fifth Street, no doubt about it. I'm just hoping that the applicants, I know it's getting short for them, but I think if there's a will, there's a way. And I think the police chief has alluded to the fact that he, and he's already done it uh, be, be earlier, working with these people to try to make this event happen. So I'm hoping the applicants 
we'll do the work necessary and we'll get this thing done in July 26th, I think was the date. So I want, I want to encourage them to come back, do the work necessary, and, and uh, make our police and fire comfortable with it, and they'll get an approval from us. Thank you. Everyone understands the motion? All in favor, all in favor of the denial, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item is denied. Item number 44, all the women, Amanda Scott. Item 44. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 44 was the discussion on the light line, lot line adjustment and cons consolidation process. And this was forwarded to City Council for discussion as there were really two parts to this, just to clarify. There's the actual um, request from some people from the public that were also on the task force to relook at the lot line and consolidation process in a task force to bring forward a, a recommendation. So that was one part of the discussion. And then there, the other part of the discussion is this is actually affecting a specific property that was halfway through the process. And so I believe um, that was the other second. And the discussion at Public Works was the potential of City Council looking at that specific lot line adjustment and looking for a possible improvement on that. And it, with that, I'll yield the floor. Um, if we could hear from Mr. Brett Limbaugh, that would be great. Let's go to Brett Limbaugh, our planning director. Okay, yeah, after our discussion at uh, committee, uh, we had a number of people meet last Friday. Uh, included in, in that discussion uh, was uh, Janelle Fink and uh, Bill Freitag, who were on the uh, second floor committee uh, that originally drafted the subdivision ordinances. Uh, I was there, uh, Terry was there, uh, Councilman Weifenbach was there, um, Joel uh, Landine, City Attorney Carla um, was there, uh, Vicki Fisher was there. Um, and a number of things happened at that meeting, so uh, let me kind of summarize that. And Ron, if I uh, forget something, uh, please remind me. Uh, but I, I think we all agreed on one thing, that uh, with the existing process that we have for uh, lot lines and consolidation plats, uh, there is clearly a, a, an issue that we need to solve. And we also know that we need to solve that through amendments to the subdivision ordinance. So that's one, one thing we were in agreement on. Uh, second thing that we were in agreement on is that the, we have four pending cases. We didn't feel that it was appropriate for us to hold up those four pending um, cases until such time as uh, the ordinance amendments were made. Um, third, uh, we agreed that we should need to close the gate. Uh, essentially put a moratorium on this type of plat until such time as the amendments are constructed, uh, reviewed by Planning Commission, and ultimately approved by Council. So those uh, points uh, were, we were all in agreement on. Um, what I would ask you to do tonight uh, is authorize uh, staff to go ahead and uh, create the amendments. I would ask you to authorize staff to approve the four pending lot line adjustments so then we get these folks uh, through the system and then uh, Mr. Landine is going to be drafting a moratorium he'll probably bring to you in a couple of weeks uh, specific to this type of plat so that we can somewhat uh, shut the gate until uh, we're ready to uh, uh, bring you the ordinance amendments so uh, with that if you have any questions I'd be more than happy to answer those. Ron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I actually have something substantive to say here, so. Well, that's good. <laughs> Glad to hear that. I sat in with the meeting, as, as Brett said, and we, we, we just kind of went down some things. We realized that there's some opportunities there. The second floor committee had met three years ago, so a lot of this stuff had been in place for a matter of three years, and it's been working just fine. Uh, I think they approved like 72 of these items already. So out of the 72 that we, we've uh, done, we, we got a, an issue with like just a few of them that we need to clean up some stuff. So first I wanted to say thank you to the, um, the committee for doing such a good job of putting this thing together that we didn't have a lot of issues. Uh, secondly, I wanted to apologize for any stomach acid that we created for the Stevens, understanding that they were working under the correct uh, um, guidelines there. And uh, so moving forward, we shouldn't be holding these up and what there was, I believe, Brett, there was four in, in process right now that we're going to, I don't know if we need to approve them or we just need to let them go through or whatever the case may be. I don't, whatever it is that we need to do, but I think Joel has that uh, ability to handle that. And uh, 
and then moving forward, we're going to put a moratorium so we can make the changes that we need to make to in the future. But as of the pending applications, I, I think that's appropriate just to move forward with them. And I, I think, like he had said, everybody had been in agreement on 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 the, the direction that we needed to take with this or these items. So, if anybody has any questions, I'd be open to questions too. And I know. I sat in for my um, counterpart charity there too, so we usually go back and forth on things that will, otherwise the two of us are going to everything together. So if anybody has any questions, I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer, so. Thank you, Ron. Before we proceed to the additional council lights, I, if, Brett, could you tell us what motion is required on this item? Is it a motion to acknowledge or do you need, do you need direction? Oh, well, you know, I might, uh, might ask uh, for the city attorney to ensure that I'm giving you the appropriate recommendation. Uh, if they acknowledge the item as shown, is that enough for us to take action on the outstanding applications, uh, provide enough of uh, direction for you to create the moratorium, and then for also for uh, staff and, uh, and others to create the amendments? I think I'd prefer it be a little more specific that you authorize us to proceed with the uh, current applications that are pending, uh, bring forward a moratorium, and then as part of that, um, we will just, I don't know that I need specific direction to bring forward the amendments. It seems like everybody's in agreement. We just need to get them finalized. So um, the the moratorium will probably come on the next agenda just so we, we don't take any more applications until we get the uh, ordinance amendments done. So if, if I can summarize, we need a, a motion on the floor now to authorize staff to proceed with the four pending applications as described in the attachment and to proceed with drafting a moratorium which will come back to the city council for approval and to proceed with drafting the appropriate ordinance amendments and resolution amendments which will also come back to the council for approval. Okay. Do we have a motion? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a, mo a three part motion. Part one, to authorize staff to approve the, the four uh, requests that are in the pipeline. Part two of the motion is to authorize staff to implement a moratorium until such time as uh, amendments to this ordinance uh, are brought forward and part three is to authorize staff to work with city attorney's office to bring forward the the appropriate uh, changes to this ordinance uh, as quickly as possible uh, for council review we have a motion by Estes and a second by Weifenbach we'll go to Alderman Amanda Scott thank you mayor may I ask Mr. Limbaugh a question please you may. thank you Brett, when you're saying there's four pending ones, are there four pending that the only reason they're being held up is because of the specific lot line and consolidation process that requires all of the infrastructure improvements to be in, or are there other complications? And I guess my bottom line question is, when you say there are four pending and the council is approving them today, are there any other um, staff recommendations and stipulations that they have to still follow or is city council trumping staff at this point by approving these four without even seeing them to see what the specifics are on each of these pending cases you know with uh, respect to uh, two of the cases there was uh, a roadway issue um, uh, which is uh, enchanted pines drive and so there are uh, portions of that road that lie in front of the properties that are under Platting discussion right now that we felt it was necessary to bring to your attention because uh, if these consolidations happened we weren't certain when or who would build the road so that's the, the instance with those two cases um, the DTH LLC case is really more of a consolidation than it is a lot line adjustment um, concern there was uh, Homestead Street and uh, uh, I'm not sure that that's going to be an issue with a consolidation plat as it might, might be with a regular plat. Um, and then lastly, the city school district has a number of properties, uh, which some of which they're trying to sell. Um, and our concern was whether or not adequate access would be provided to all the existing lots. 
So it's kind of a mixed bag of things that you're looking at. Um, and I think we can work through all of them. Um, that's as quick a summary as I can give you for each of the four cases. So then to clarify my question, my question is if City Council is approving these four pending cases, is City Council giving staff the ability to work through these four cases or is City Council approving these four cases and they're a done deal? And that's some of the difficulty with the discussion that we're having right now is, is, um, is this the appropriate process uh, with which uh, we should be planting these properties. I think if you give us the authorization to move ahead with the applications as submitted tonight, we will process them as lot line adjustments or consolidation plats and uh, we'll, be, we'll be through that process. Uh, it's an administrative process, so those don't go to council for, for approval anyways. But we didn't feel comfortable just uh, unilaterally doing that without bringing this to your attention. So is it your understanding that with City Council approval tonight, the City Council is not approving each of these four? They're giving staff the authority to go back and work to approve these? I think that's fair. And uh, Joel, if you want to pipe in, please. They're going to be approved. I mean, the policy is, the issue is the subdivision improvements have not been required. The practice has been not to require the subdivision improvements. The problem was that we're working out and that we have, I think, a solution for is that at the time, I think there was a misunderstanding between staff and maybe even some of the committee members that when you did a lot line adjustment, what it was meant for is if you're in Canyon Lake neighborhood and your street's only 20 feet wide and it doesn't meet city standards and you want to do a lot line adjustment that you don't need to come through and get all the variances. At the time this was done, we didn't have the exception process. So they were trying to avoid having to go through the whole subdivision variance process when everyone knew that you weren't going to make somebody in the middle of the block widen the street when the rest of the street was going to still be narrow. What we didn't anticipate is that people were going to start using this to consume whole um, unplatted balances and things without the necessary subdivision improvements. So that was the dispute and what got, frankly, the, the members of the second floor committee riled up is that by saying that the subdivision are questioning the installation of the subdivision improvements in some of these cases, that we were changing the process without changing the ordinance. So if you approve this, we are agreeing to move forward with the four that have been currently submitted under the process as it has been and then we will not take any more applications and bring forward and even the members of the second floor committee acknowledge a need for some changes and to close this so this can't continue into the future but that's what's in front of you tonight Okay, so I'm going to clarify again, because I am not comfortable saying the City Council is giving carte blanche approval on these four pending cases without staff review and working through them. So I'm just going to clarify again. With the way the motion is brought forward on all three pieces, these four pending cases would be approved and the staff could not negotiate or uh, make arrangements with or work with the applicants to, to to change them in any way they're going to be approved as submitted well we can always talk to them but we cannot deny them at this point or we would not deny them for lack of the subdivision improvements and is that and I'm sorry this Mar Brett may have to and Brett seriously it, it's just each of these cases was unique looking at the the improvements the infrastructure improvements that's the only issues on each of these four pending cases uh, yeah you know it, to attach to your agenda summary there are nine instances where something similar has happened and those were approved by staff um, th this rose up uh, to uh, senior staff level when we were and it was brought to us by staff that what do we do about these streets that aren't uh, being constructed and that's when we called timeout and said look we really need to take a look at this um, however looking at the bat the past case history and out of 72 there were nine that were similar uh, we felt it wouldn't be appropriate to hold these four okay. so um, whether or not 
uh, staff agrees with it, I, th I think that it's only fair in this case to move ahead with those because that has been the practice. Thank you. That that makes me a lot more comfortable. And then, Joel, if my, I may question you on what you just summarized as well. The moratorium that is on this motion, does that moratorium take effect today or can a person bring in an application until the moratorium comes before the city council and be accepted by staff and we have to consider another case? There is a small potential for that, but um, when we discussed it, we felt it was important to put the moratorium on the next agenda so there was proper notice of it. And quite frankly, the discussion was that two weeks it's going to take to get it on the agenda is probably too quick for anyone to start from scratch. So if, if they do bring one in, they were about to submit it anyway. They aren't. It's going to be hard for anyone to try to get in before the moratorium and get the surveying and all of that done that they need to get done prior to that. So we weren't overly concerned about it. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for putting up for my clarifying questions. I'm much more um, comfortable in approving the motion that's currently on the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Good questions. We'll go to Alderman Jerry Wright. Jerry. I support the motion, but what's the future for, is it Enchanted Hills Road? In is there a brief history and how it ended up being the way it is without being constructed, or is that too much time for tonight? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I would Someone's not be the expert. It was, it was coming, before so my time, so I can't give you a real big, long history of that. I don't know that Terry would feel comfortable in doing that. Uh, Joel, I don't, I don't know if you have any back history on that, but it uh, might be a little bit too much for one night. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll talk off record. Thank you. Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, I appreciate Mr. Landine's summary. That's exactly, we're not approving anything. Basically, what we're doing is, is Brett brought us an opportunity forward that he wants to address. So with the moratorium, we're going to address that opportunity because it only happens like when the sun, the moon, and the stars line up that we have this issue, and he's going to take care of it. It's basically when it's an unplatted piece. So uh, we, like I said, we've done like 72 of these, and we're down to you know just there's really no, no real effect in this whole thing other than that it gives Brett an opportunity to address what he sees as a potential in the future so I hope I mean thanks. thank you so to summarize the motion before we proceed to the vote we're authorizing staff to proceed with the four applications they are being approved the four pending applications we're also asking staff to proceed with drafting a moratorium that will come back to the, the, the next Public Works or Legal and Finance Committee meeting as staff discretion for discussion and consideration and a vote at that time, and to bring forward amendments uh, for to address this issue in the future, and it might, might be resolution or ordinance amendments. Are we all on the same page? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're now on items uh, 45 through 61. We'll take those all at once unless someone has anything that needs to be pulled for separate consideration. We have a motion to approve 45 through 61. We have a motion by Lewis and a second by Laurenti. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We're now on item number 61A, which was an announcement from Alderman Darla Drew regarding Gear Up and the Rockin' with Disabilities event. Darla, the floor is yours. Um, yes, I'd just like to um, let the community know, along with the council and mayor, that um, 350 American Indian students and staff are now in residence at the South Dakota School of Mines. They are freshmen through rising seniors. They'll be in an academic setting in a camp for the next six weeks through July 11th. So please make them comfortable when you see them out and about the community. Um, the second thing is that I wanted to let everyone know that um, Rockin' with Disabilities, the uh, Mayor's Committee for People with Disabilities is having an event on Wednesday, the 3rd of June. It'll start at 10 o'clock and go until 2 o'clock in Memorial Park. The band show will be Rockin' with Dee Dee and the Pharaohs. <laughs> and then we'll have a lot of services and equipment that people with disabilities will have to um, We'll learn how to use. We'll um, just doing this to make the community more aware of the barriers that people have with disabilities in this community to just be able to live and work and and play in Rapid City, South Dakota. So that's once again June 3rd from 10 a.m. till 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, in Memorial Park. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion to acknowledge that announcement? 
Motion by Doyle, second by Scott. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We're now on item 62 through 81. The public hearing is now open. We do not have any speaker request forms for these items. Have I missed anyone? Seeing none, public hearing is now closed. Would any of these items, do any of these items need to be removed for separate consideration or can we have a motion for all? Motion by Laurenti, second by Scott. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Item 82, bill list, Pauline Sumption, our finance officer. Wow. <clears throat> There are no changes to the bill list, so the total is that which is before you at eight million eight hundred and eighty six thousand five hundred and seventeen dollars and eighty six cents. We have a motion by Laurenti and a second by Lewis. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Estes, second by Scott. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We are adjourned seven thirty one PM. Have a good night, everyone. Remember that.